Y19, like waves, we learn four Maxwell's equations. There are two divergences. Both of them vanishes in the vacuum. And two Kerr equations, Faraday's law and Maxwell's law. We learn that electric field and the speed of light multiplied by the magnetic field, their magnitudes are the same. In addition, both electric field and magnetic field, they are in phase. In addition, they are traveling with the speed of light. Furthermore, both the electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to the wave vector that is that indicates the direction of the propagation. Wave vector K is the 2 pi over lambda, and uh, there should be a unit vector along the direction of propagation. Both the electric field and magnetic field are transverse. That means there's a perpendicular to the wave vector. It's electric field and magnetic field. And we have to multiply the speed of light to make the magnitudes of the electric field and magnetic field the same. We learned how to combine these into a single wave equation by taking the curve of this you take the curve of curve, you'll find Laplacian, proportional to negative Laplacian, and you can make use of this, uh, these two equations simultaneously, then it becomes a single curve of the magnetic field and single curve of the electric field is to be replaced with the time derivative of the magnetic field and time derivative of the electric field. As a result, every component X, Y, Z component, sure, if, if it is a propagating along an X axis, then Y, Z components, and uh, it, it is propagating along the Z axis, then X, Y components, two polarizations satisfy the same wave equation. It propagates with the speed of light. And the speed of light is determined by the product of of the permeability constant and the permittivity constant in the vacuum. Uh, because uh, there is no phase difference between the electric field and magnetic field, we can use the same argument for the sinusoidal function. And when we learned RLC circuit, we have found that the sinusoidal wave a sinusoidal time dependence that can be uh, that can always be expressed in terms of exponential function. It is more convenient than the sinusoidal function because it's a integral and derivative have the same structure. So why don't we introduce the exponential i something? And if we consider wave, its argument must be k x dot k dot x minus omega t style. And we know the speed of light relates the wave number k and the angular frequency omega. In addition, this electric field polarization vector and magnetic field polarization vector, that is a magnetic field polarization vector, they are orthogonal to each other as well as they are uh, perpendicular to the wave vector. So we use, if we use this exponential wave function, then we call it as a phasor. It is quite useful in analyzing the interference pattern of electromagnetic field, or that includes the visible light. We can always return to the usual sinusoidal function by taking the real part or the imaginary part of that complex number. 
propagation of a wave can be understood as a, a translation of a fluctuation in space by a distance with the velocity v in time interval delta t. The shape of a wave is invariant. This solution, the solution of this wave equation satisfies this kind of form. Next, we consider monochromatic wave. Chromatic is color, single color, it's a kind of black and white, something like that. This, if we consider the oscillation with respect to time, we have a oscillation, this fluctuation returns to the same phase in time, capital T, that is called the period. And inverse of period will be one over T, and that will be the frequency V and uh, nu, nu. And if you multiply to pi, then you will find uh, this one to be the omega, the angular frequency. Sure, it should be something like that, two pi nu. So this this is inverse reciprocal of the wave number. So in this spatial domain, we have lambda, and the time domain, we have period t. Monochromatic means this wavelength, or equivalently, the frequency equivalently the period is uniquely defined it, is, it does not change then the analysis will be, become a very very simple so if you consider a wave there should be a direction of propagation and According to this formula, you can determine the wave number and wave number multiplied by the unit vector that represents the direction of propagation is the wave vector. And wave vector, as we have already derived, wave, vector, wave number is an angular frequency divided by the speed of light. Sure, we are right now we are considering the propagation of the electromagnetic wave, and light wave is a kind of electromagnetic wave. Monochromatic wave is a periodic in both time and spatial domains, and its period with respect to spatial coordinate is lambda. If you translate the wave by the wavelengths along the same direction of propagation or backward, either way, the wave should be invariant. In addition, if you translate time by its period or multiples of period, integral multiples of period, then we should be the same. So sinusoidal wave for example, cosine, sine, exponential function, everything will be monochromatic. You can see this k, k, k is uniquely defined, and omega is completely determined by k if, once you make use of this relation. Again, wave vector or wave number can always express in terms of wavelengths. Frequency can always express in terms of period. So either way, you can write in this in such a manner or this. Now we will consider the interference pattern of two monochromatic waves that may have phase difference. Let's see. Phase difference in an interference. Why don't we consider two-dimensional vector 
on the x y plane and the two dimensional planar radial vector er you should be familiar with this unit vector er theta so you have we have x y plane the angle this is a zimuda angle with respect to z axis and Sometimes we can say it is a polar angle with respect to the x-axis, but it returns to the same point and the theta runs from zero to two pi. So it is a, uh, rather, rather than the polar angle, but the Ozimodo angle in free dimension. Anyway, we consider this vector and why don't we rotate this one additionally by phi and the magnitude of this vector and magnitude of this vector is assumed to be the same they are a amplitude a we have phase difference a phase difference phase difference between the, these two two dimensional vectors if you add these two vectors the resultant vector is one is er theta, the other a er theta, and the other is a er theta plus a phi. So this whole angle is a phi. You can find the resultant vector of v1 and v2 and the resultant vector will be the diagonal of this rhombus and middle school student knows how to find the diagonal that is 2a cosine half of phi okay uh, therefore the, the you can draw a diagonal this diagonal then because it's a one half of this is a one half of phi so you will find this this length is a cosine half of phi and this is doubled therefore this length is a 2a cosine half of phi as a result our magnitude of this resultant factor is a 2a cosine half of phi it is apparent that the mm, the direction of this resultant factor should be in the middle the phase difference between these two should be phi and phase difference between these two and these two should be one half of total therefore it is very easy to find that the direction is in the middle therefore this phase become one half and magnitude is two times original amplitude multiplied by cosine one half of phi this is a very very important formula very simple but powerful formula to be used in analyzing any interference pattern for any monochromatic wave to monochromatic waves of equal amplitude, equal amplitude. Okay, so this relation is a true even in the addition of the sinusoidal function. You have cosine, cosine, we have a phase difference. This one half of this phase difference appears in the twice the am original amplitude. And this one, the same kind of function. However, phase, there, there were one half, not one half, phi to be the phase between these two but in comparison with this, we have only one half of phi. This completely identical structure, algebraic structure appears 
because the complex number, two-dimensional, we, we describe complex number, it is a, a real part of a complex number, and y is an imaginary part of a complex number, and we, we use the radius is just like the magnitude of the complex number. That is a square root x squared plus y squared. And this angle theta is the same. So x r cosine theta, y equal r sine theta. This formula is identical to the two-dimensional Euclidean space. And this formula is identical to the two-dimensional, this complex plane. So one-to-one -one correspondence between the two, two spaces result in the identical formulas. In addition, we can replace this cosine with sine. And again, we can replace this one in terms of the exponential function. So in any case, in any case, this structure is invariant. It's a very, very useful relation. And if you add two waves, unlike the particle, two waves adds up algebraically. It has a structure of a, a vector property. And if you add two vectors in of the same magnitude in opposite direction, the resultant vector should be zero. If you have two identical vectors, they are parallel, then resultant vector should be doubled. So this kind of addition is called the, this kind of addition is called constructive interference. This kind of cancellation is called destructive interference. So in the case when the amplitudes are the same, the constructive interference gives twice of the original amplitude. If the amplitudes are the same, but if they are completely out of phase, this is in phase, in phase, out of phase, If the two amplitudes are the same and the two waves are completely out of phase, then the resultant wave disappears completely. So constructive interference, destructive interference, they are all expressed in terms of a very compact relation. Amplitude changes by according to the phase if the both original waves amplitudes are identical to each other. And the resultant wave should be shifted by in the middle. And in here, F doesn't care, whatever. It should be a two-dimensional planar radial vector, exponential I theta, cosine theta, sine theta, whatever. Everything must satisfy identical relation. Very, very important. And the constructive interference appears when this one, this one has plus minus one. The result appears only if they are, this is in phase, in phase, integral multiples of two pi. That is the period of sinusoidal function. And destructive interference appears when this cosine one half of phi becomes zero. That appears in the half integral multiples of two pi. Half integral, so one half, three halves, five halves, multiplied by two pi. Okay. So you will find, depending on the phase, for example, 
And here, 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 wave disappears. Here, 2 pi, 0, wave is magnified, magnified by factor of 2. If you see this figure from the left, then you will find it. complete disappearance of the wave. Complete disappearance of the wave is 0 pi. And in here, at 2 pi, this wave is double, double. OK, so this structure holds whatever cosine, sine, e to the i theta, or e r theta. Interference and path length difference. U function, the wave function of monochromatic wave function has a structure of argument kx minus omega t style. You will find k is 2 pi over lambda. Then you can find the 2 pi factor of x over lambda t over capital T, something like that. If you ignore the time dependence or average over, or if you concentrate on the phase change due to the treble of wave, then the distance of treble from the source of the wave, wave propagates, and we have delta x, then the ratio of this delta x with respect to the wavelengths multiplied by 2 pi should be the phase difference. So if phase difference is a multiple integral of multiple of 2 pi, then it should be constructive. And therefore, this one determines whether the interference is constructive or destructive. So we say this delta x is a path length of difference, path difference, interpret, we, we can interpret this path difference by taking the ratio with respect to the wavelengths. The Feynman's uh, least time principle is a, a very interesting formula from which the light travels along the direction on which the time is spent least. So least time principle of Feynman is that a light wave travels by minimizing the necessary time of travel. So that can derive, for example, Snell's law for refraction or reflection of light on a mirror. A simple derivation of uh, Snell's law using this Fermat's principle is possible. From A to B, we can draw a straight line. And why don't we choose a point here? Origin is on the interface between the one, medium one, and medium two, the straight line. Why don't we move this point on the interface and allow the variation? Then we can find a time of travel from this to there. By the way, light wave travels with the speed of light. However, this C is the speed of light in vacuum. In case there are media 
the speed of light slows down. For example, an atom can absorb light and it emits light. So there should be a time delay. Therefore, if there is a kind of material called the medium, water, air, whatever, then the speed of light slows down. The slows down of the speed of light is expressed as index of refraction. This is the speed of light in vacuum, and that should be divided by the index of refraction to find the speed of light in a medium one and medium two. Using this method, you can determine the total distance and AP is from A to P and BP is P to B. Distance divided by speed of light in each medium will determine the sum of time spent from A to B. You will find the minimum value of this by taking the derivative with respect to X and when this derivative becomes a zero, it should be the minimum, either minimum or maximum value. And actually it becomes the minimum value. So this is a kind of derivation based on a simple principle that light travels to minimize uh, along the direction to minimize the time span for the travel. So from this relation, we will find this kind of relation. And what's that? Uh, that is called the Snell's law. The speed of light, wavelengths, and sine theta. Here, sine theta is uh, angle of theta. This is theta with respect to normal. The angle of incident should be measured from the normal direction. And angle of refraction that is called theta two, that should be measured with respect to the normal direction. Okay. The Hamilton's least action principle is uh, uh, very similar to Fermat's principle. It is a, a kind of mathematical assumption that the equation of motion developed by Newton can also be derived by assuming some fundamental argument that is called minimizing the action. An action is called the time integral of Lagrangian and Lagrangian is the kinetic energy subtracted by the potential energy. You will find this is called the Euler-Lagrange equation that is exactly the same as Newton's second law. And this equation can also be derived by assuming that the action is minimized. Why? Nobody knows. Hamilton found that this, this relation is equivalent to Newton's laws of motion. By the way, Newton's laws of motion breaks down in the, if we consider the motion, a very fast motion with the speed of light. However, this Hamilton's least action principle survives against relativity, even quantum mechanics. Okay, next we consider Huygens principle. Here we have a single wave generated by the this plane wave, uh, not a plane wave, there's a point source generates a circular wave on a water, for example. If you increase the number of point source, we have three, you can find the change in shape. 21, 100, 
it looks like a plane wave. Yes, this one reveals the Huygens principle. Any point source that generates a circular or spherical wave, if they, or if you bring the sources in many, many cases, then some of these sources, some of this resultant wave becomes a plane wave. So plane wave can be interpreted as an infinite sum of point source that generates the circular waves. So this is called Huygens principle. It is not a mimic, and it's my own exact calculation. Features of Huygens principle shows that this is a kind of uh, plane wave along this direction, and we say the wave fronts. Wave fronts connects all of the position that has equal phase. That's quite important, wave fronts. And wave fronts is perpendicular to the wave vector that represents the direction of propagation. We know the relation among the speed of propagation and speed of light and wavelengths and frequency. Applying, applying the method to Snell's law, we can derive without using Fermat's principle. Instead, here we have another assumption that wave can bend when it passes through a boundary between interface between the two phases, wave can change its wavelength or shape. However, the point that connects the two, bound, uh, two media does not break at all. This is assumption, and actually that is true in reality. Wave does not break on the interface. In that case, we can make a, a very important constraint that the frequency of the two waves, the same wave propagating in a medium and the same wave propagating the other in the other medium, they have equal identical frequency. Because the wave does not break at all, the time necessary to become in phase, time t that is required to move this next wavefront to approach the interface should be the same as the time required to pass through in the medium or another medium. So this assumption gives a very simple relation. We have wavefronts in here in medium one, and we have wavefronts in here in medium two. You have found that wavelengths in medium one is longer than the wavelengths in the medium two. Instead, because the wave doesn't break at the interface, you will find these hypotenuse of this right triangle should be the same in both medium one and medium two. As a result, this relation gives the proportional um, pro the wavelengths and sine of angle that may be in some case in in this side it is an angle of incidence and this side angle of refraction they are satisfying the similar equation and equating this with the for example, d equals lambda 1 over sine theta 1, something like that, we arrive at the 
a very, very important formula that is called Snell's law. And here, velocity, wavelength, sine of angle, that is an angle of incidence or refraction. It is upside down. Index of refraction is upside down. Okay, 